She's young, she's from the Caribbean. Yeah, she just loudly to say, you know, she shined before she even say something, you know. Number one, she's she's good looking, that helps. She's 19, she's young. She brings something new to the table. Her beauty, most guys love her beauty. She makes you dance, make you feel good about yourself. And I just like her style, her style is kind of unique to me. Rihanna, from Caribbean beauty queen to American dream. She has topped the chart since the beginning of her extraordinary ride. The way her journey started is like a fairy tale story. The albums she has amassed in her young career are an amazing feat. The awards and notoriety is what she always expected of herself. Her albums, Music of the Sun, A Girl Like Me, and Good Girl Gone Bad, have amounted to total sales of 9 million plus albums and have included numerous awards. Rihanna's sudden and meteoric rise makes American Idol hopefuls look like seasoned crooners who have spent a decade on the road before hitting the big time. A native of the island of Barbados, Rihanna lived an average life and barely even dreamed of show business before she was discovered in late 2003. Sometimes sunny places tend to produce sunny people, which was certainly the case with Rihanna. Like her native Barbados, She's warm, colorful, and full of life, with just the right amount of spice. From number one hits on the Billboard charts, to across seas going number one on the UK charts, Rihanna has come to amaze all. Long black hair, smooth golden complexion, she stands at a height of 5 feet 8 inches with the body of a supermodel. Her beauty cannot be denied and she has been tracked down exclusively by the Mega Beauty Enhancer CoverGirl to exploit the amazing beauty that she possesses. Rihanna is indeed living a Cinderella story. She says, If I hadn't met Evan and Carl, I would have been dreaming forever. I am so thankful for everything they've done. Through the years, many have tried to copy her style, her looks, and even her voice. But this doesn't bother the lovely singer because she doesn't believe that an imitation or a copy of her style, looks, or voice can even be achieved. Says Rihanna, there's nobody really in my league. But there's competition everywhere. The whole industry is competition. There are people who like other artists, and there are people who like me. And there are people who like both. It's been an eventful and eye-opening ride for the Barbados-born singer. So much has happened in my life. I feel like I've grown five years in a year, Rihanna said. With a work ethic reminiscent of Motown sisters back in the day when soul reigned supreme, Rihanna has been traveling through the world to showcase her music, her dance, her charm, and not to forget, her sex appeal. This young beauty has acknowledged the likes of Beyonce, Alicia Keys, and Mariah Carey are her influences, and they have promoted her growth and stable music structure. But Caribbean music and musicians have always demanded a following of her, such as the likes of Jackie O'Pell, Jimmy Senya Hayes, Shaba Ranks, Bob Marley, Sean Paul, Shaggy, and many more. Caribbean music spans between 15 different islands and displays over 75 different types of musical styles, with reggae, zouk, salsa, and calypso being the most celebrated throughout the world. Caribbean music encompasses a mixed variety of musical style and traditions from all islands located in the Caribbean. The styles range from traditional, such as Puerto Rican Aguinaldo and Jamaican Mento, to more contemporary music, such as salsa and reggae. Rihanna's hometown of Barbados is one of the most beautiful islands in the world. Besides its beauty, Barbados has one of the highest standards of living and literacy rates worldwide. The island of Barbados's Human Development Index ranking is consistently among the top 50 in the world fourth in the Americas behind Canada and the U.S. Barbados does not compare in size to the U.S., being only 166 square miles. But it does compare in character. The island was given its name by the early Portuguese settlers, originally naming it Ilhas dos Barbados, which means Island of the Bearded Ones, and over the years shortened to Barbados. Understanding its musical history, Barbados displays a musical style that includes calypso, pan music, ringbang, soca, spooge, and toque. Spooge was invented in the 1960s by famed musician Jackie O'Pell, 
It is said to be primarily a fusion of Jamaican ska and calypso. Pan music is derived from the beating of a 50-gallon steel drum by a musician called a panist that transforms the airwaves into a vibration of melodies. Calypso originated in the early 20th century as a way for the slaves of the island to communicate with one another, since they were not allowed to communicate between themselves. Later on, Calypso was a way of spreading news, such as politics, around the island. Soca is a form of dance music that originated from Calypso. It combines the melodic, uplifting sound of Calypso with insistent percussion. Tuk music is brought together by a collaboration of musical instruments, such as the double-headed bass drum, the triangle, the flute, the snare drum, and the penny whistle. The Barbadian culture is a mix of African and British elements, and the island's music reflects this mix through song types and styles, instrumentation, dances, and aesthetic principles. Barbados is a very well-developed local scene for American jazz and calypso. Calypso was the very first popular music in Barbados, going back to the 1930s. Barbados displays a wide variety of musical festivals to celebrate its musical tradition. The main music festival in Barbados is called Cropover, which is celebrated with song, dance, Calypso tent competitions and parades. The Cropover Festival celebrates the end of the sugarcane harvest. In addition to Cropover, music plays an important role in many other Barbadian holidays and festivals. The Easter Oysters Fish Festival, for example, features a street party with music to celebrate the signing of the Charter of Barbados and the fishing industry of the island, and the Whole Town Festival, which commemorates the arrival of the first settlers in 1627. The Caribbean boasts a musical presence that many listeners shout and scream for, and now there is a new kid on the block. With the musical elements and energy surging through Rihanna's entire body, the sounds of the Caribbean flows from her lips to rip traditional reggae tracks like a seasoned dancehall queen. Rihanna possesses a powerful singing voice that conjures up feelings and experiences beyond her years. The green-eyed wonder compares her musical style to Kalaloo, a Caribbean dish which consists of a wide variety of meats. Her passion for music is unquestionable, as displayed by her body of work. In a recent interview, she says, I was born to do it. I eat, sleep, and drink music. I love music. I have a passion for it, and it comforts me. As one of the brightest and upcoming stars, Rihanna has amazed audiences and silenced her critics. With an electric voice that can make anybody wiggle and their hair stand up, she was determined to make her dreams come true, and herself a reality for everyone to see and hear. Going back 19 years earlier, it was February 20th, 1988, and Robin Rihanna Fenton was born into this world with green eyes that permeated a halo above her head. Innocent and filled with the love of God, the world gazed on her and showered blessings on her that would carry this young person to the beginning of her destiny to encapsulate the minds and hearts of all. Conceived by her parents, Ronald Fenton, her Barbadian father of African Barbadian and Irish Barbadian descent, and her Guyanese mother of Barbadian descent, Rihanna was very much loved. Family life was wonderful growing up early on. She was raised in a family that was very much well off financially. Growing up, her mother Monica worked as an accountant, and her father Ronald worked as a warehouse supervisor. But soon, her childhood on the Caribbean island of Barbados began being deeply affected. Being the oldest of three siblings, with her brothers Rory and Rajad being the youngest, Rihanna could not keep the family from falling apart. With the years of drug abuse by her father Ronald, his use of crack cocaine finally caught up and pulled the family apart in 2002 when she was just 14 years old. The use of crack cocaine has destroyed many lives. The crack epidemic in the world has been a major problem and issue for those trying to find an answer and for those using the drug. The drug itself does not discriminate but studies have shown that its major consumers are people of color throughout the world. From the mean streets to an island of paradise such as Barbados, crack cocaine can be involved in any style of living. 
Crack cocaine was first developed during the cocaine boom in the 1970s, and its use became enormously popular in the mid-1980s, particularly in areas where people of color resided. Crack cocaine is a strong central nervous stimulant that interferes with and causes excess amounts of dopamine in the brain. As a result, the psychological effects can be extremely reinforcing. Cocaine is a highly addictive substance, and crack cocaine is substantially more addicting, as the drug is far more potent and is smoked. Users quickly develop a tolerance to crack cocaine, needing more of the substance to achieve the desired effects. Today it remains a very problematic and popular drug, as it's inexpensive to produce and is much cheaper to purchase than powder cocaine. Rihanna says, Even as a toddler, I learned that my mom and dad would argue when there was foil paper in the ashtray. Everybody has something that makes them stronger in their life. My childhood experience has helped to make me a stronger person and a stronger woman. That is very necessary in this industry, and I need to be very responsible. My childhood helped me to do that. Finding an outlet through singing, Brianna began involving herself in many different types of activities, even forming an all-girls singing group with two of her friends. In 2004, she won the Miss Combermere Beauty Pageant and performed in the Colors of Combermere School show, singing Mariah Carey's Hero. I did one talent show at my high school and won it. I would sing in the mirror, holding a brush to my mouth like it was a microphone. The neighbors would always be complaining about how loud I was singing, she says. I was pretty loud. I annoyed them. <laughs> you you were know, really I'm loud. sorry, but no, I don't regret it, and I sure mm -hmm. they don't either. When I really realized I wanted to do this, I had to be around eight years old, yeah. and I was really in love with Mariah Carey. Interviewed by Derek Paiva of the Honolulu Advertiser, Rihanna stated, Growing up, I always sang. No one was ever really pushing me to do it. It was something that I wanted to do. So I developed a personal passion for it, fell in love with music and developed my own taste and style. Discovered by super producer Evan Rogers, who was also known for his work with Christina Aguilera, NSYNC, Jessica Simpson, Kelly Clarkson, Ruben Studdard, and others, were introduced to each other by a mutual acquaintance. Rogers immediately contacted his partner, Carl Sturkin, after an informal audition by the young starlet. Reported by Entertainment Weekly, the minute Rihanna walked into the room, it was like the other two girls didn't exist, says Evan Rogers. They soon after headed to New York, leaving all behind her to cut a demo of close to a dozen songs. When I left Barbados, I didn't look back, Rihanna adds. I wanted to do what I had to do, even if it meant moving to America. Evan Rogers and Carl Sturkin helped build the career of Rihanna and are the principals of her production company. They are a Grammy-nominated team whose mastery of many styles of music has resulted in more than 20 top 40 hits, 12 top 5 hits, and 6 BMI awards. Their songs have sold more than 60 million albums both U.S. and around the world. They decided to start their own label in 2005 called SRP Records, with Rihanna being their first signing. Most recently, Rihanna's success has enabled the two to sign more artists, such as singer-songwriter Chantel from Barbados and Jamaican singing group J Status, among many, many more. After pushing the demo to a number of high-profile record companies, one took the first bite. My passport says Sean, but you may know me by another name. Def Jam Records was one of the first record labels to embrace rap music as an art form and willing to embrace any and all types of music and musical styles to come its way. Founded by Rick Rubin in his dorm room at New York University and later adding Russell Simmons to the mix, Def Jam Records have produced some of the most electrifying artists in the history of hip-hop. In 1984, they released their first artists in singles, LL Cool J's I Need a Beat and Rock Hard by the Beastie Boys. With the success of these two artists, Columbia Records and CBS Records both inked distribution deals with Def Jam in 1985. The first full-length album released by Def Jam Records was LL Cool J's Radio in 1985. With all the success, 
In 1986, Def Jam created a short-lived subsidiary label called OBR Records, catering towards R&B artists. The first R&B artist signed to the label was none other than the Rain Man himself, Orin Juice Jones, releasing the smash hit, The Rain. Years later, still laying claim to keeping their doors open to all types of new musical ventures, they signed the political and controversial rap group, Public Enemy, led by Chuck D and Flava Flav, whose lyrical content garnered the company both critical acclaim and disdain. Now, Def Jam Records, headed by President and CEO Sean Jay-Z Carter, demanded that the young green-eyed beauty come to Def Jam and give him a live and in-person taste of what the Caribbean was all about. Jay-Z, whose birth name is Sean Carter, is a New York-bred phenom out of the Marcy Housing Projects in Bedford-Stuyvesant, Brooklyn. Early on in his life, he was known as Jazzy, until he decided to change it to who we all know him as today, Jay-Z. His original start came when he collaborated with his mentor, Jazzo, on a couple of songs called The Originators and Hawaiian Sophie in the late 80s and early 90s. His career really started to take off when he battled a rapper by the name of Zai. That battle caught the eye of many record labels. Even with this, Jay-Z saw that getting a deal was still out of his reach. That's when he decided to start his own independent label, Rockefeller Records. He co-founded Rockefeller Records with partners Damon Dash and Kareem Biggs Burke. Soon after, he struck a deal with Priority Records to distribute his own material. He released his first album in 1996, entitled Reasonable Doubt. Despite his mediocre success on the charts, that album is considered a classic within the rap community. In 1997, Jay-Z decided to travel a new path and severed his ties with Priority Records and inked a new distribution deal with Def Jam Records. From 1996 to 2007, Jay-Z has accounted for 11 albums and 25 Grammy nominations with six wins. Of those six Grammy wins, he won for Best Rap Album, Best Rap Performance by a Duo or Group, Best R&B Song, and three Best Rap Sung Collaboration. In 2003, Jay-Z retired from making any more studio albums. To commemorate the event, he held a concert at Madison Square Garden the concert showcased many performers, including The Roots, Missy Elliott, Memphis Bleak, Beanie Siegel, Freeway, Mary J. Blige, Twista, Ghostface Killer, Foxy Brown, Pharrell, R. Kelly, and his other half, Beyonce, with special appearances by Valletta Wallace and Afeni Shakur, the mothers of the notorious B.I.G. and Tupac Shakur. All of the proceeds for the concert were donated to charity. Besides his music career, he's also ventured in other financial sects. He is co-owner of the 4040 Club, an upscale sports bar that started in New York City and has since expanded to other parts of the country and overseas. Jay-Z serves as co-brand director for Budweiser Select and collaborates with the company on strategic marketing programs and creative ad development. And besides this cold beverage, Rockefeller also distributes Armadale, a Scottish vodka. Other ventures include being part owner of the NBA basketball team, the New Jersey Nets, in which he paid a reported $4.5 million for a stake in the organization. In 1996, he helped co-found the urban clothing brand Rockaware and invested in a real estate development venture called J Hotels. He is one of the most financially successful hip-hop artists and entrepreneurs in America. Jay-Z is the richest hip-hop entertainer, having a net worth estimate of $547 million. In 2004, Jay-Z was appointed President and CEO of Def Jam Records. On October 27, 2005, Jay-Z headlined New York's Power 105.1 concert powerhouse. The concert was titled, I Declare War.
The theme of the concert was to mark Jay-Z's position as president and CEO of Def Jam Records. Such artists as Neo, T.I., Young Jeezy, Kanye West, Paul Wall, and P. Diddy, and many more were in attendance. When the concert was all said and done, instead of declaring war, he declared that he was the United Nations of this rap shit. Being president and CEO of Def Jam Records, Jay-Z has signed new, creative, and fresh face artists with something different to offer, which is a staple of Def Jam Records. One major signing included the Caribbean-born singer Rihanna. In 2005, he gave the young singer a chance of a lifetime. When interviewed by Jennifer Bisram of morafire.com, Rihanna says, I was so scared before I went in there, but the minute I walked in, the whole atmosphere changed. They really made me feel comfortable and at home, and I was able to audition comfortably. When asked what she performed, she replied, Whitney Houston's For the Love of You. It was very nerve-wracking. You know, it was Jay-Z, and I was obviously starstruck. Plus, it was a huge audition, you know? Jay-Z started clapping and smiling. Then he was like, okay, you know, we don't sign songs here. We sign artists. When asked by Hope Clover of AllHipHop.com, why do you think a legend like Jay-Z would react like that? What do you think sets you apart from other R&B acts that auditioned for him before? Rihanna replied, I think it's my whole musical style. I brought something different to the industry. There's no other girl doing reggae, fused with hip-hop and R&B. So I think he saw that. And he saw that I'm a great artist, and that's what made him want to sign me. Def Jam Inc. the young 16-year-old singer to a multi-million dollar six-album contract. We were there until 4.30 in the morning, closing the deal. Every time I signed my name, I was just smiling. I didn't sleep for three days, she says. Now becoming included in the list of Caribbean stars such as Sean Paul, Shaggy, and many others, Rihanna is soon to head to the top of that list. Now, after so many years of her anticipation and hard work, everything was about to pay off. Honda Replay a Caribbean slang for Play It Again, was her first single released by Def Jam Records on June 25th and was welcomed with open arms and a strong radio response by the listeners. That summer, Honda Replay got as high as the number two spot on both the US Billboard Hot 100 charts and the UK Singles chart, gaining several number one positions in many other music charts, as well as number one on iTunes. Speaking of the song, she said, I didn't like Ponder Replay at first. I thought it sounded like a nursery rhyme. It didn't sound like singing. It wasn't music that I was used to or artists that I was used to. I recorded it anyway. That's when I realized it was more of a vibe. It was really feedback from people that made me realize it was a great song. Reflecting on her original resistance to the single, the fan reaction was the very opposite of her initial feeling and position taken. One fan on the site YouTube put it this way, The song was one of the best I have heard in a long time. Her accent just puts me in another dimension. The singer blew up the radio waves from New York to California. The elements that created this song to be a monster of an artist brought together the correct ingredients. With this, her debut album, Music of the Sun, was released in August of 2005. The album consisted of a number of artists that she collaborated with. Dancehall artist Vibes Cartel on the song You Don't Love Me No No No, Canadian rapper Cardinal Official on the song Rush, and record label mate Jay Status for the song entitled Here I Go Again. To add a little more controversy and excitement to the album, O'Neal Bryan, aka Elephant Man, was added for a Ponda Replay remix bonus track on the Music of the Sun album. Born September 11, 1975 in Kingston, Jamaica, known earlier in his career for being affiliated with the Scared M crew, Elephant Man has been criticized for his lyrics, calling for violence against gays. In 2003, 
The British LBGT group Outrage called for his arrest and prosecution. However, a record company gag and an agreement with gay rights groups in the UK has allowed him to remain jail-free, but again silent on the matter. With critics looming, the album was described by Rolling Stone magazine as lacking the replay value, ingenuity, and rhythm of the single Pond de Replay, of US R&B inflecting upon her Caribbean charm. Vibes Cartel helped her to energize the remake of You Don't Love Me, No, 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 from her Music of the Sun album. It was originally sung by Don Penn. Penn originally recorded the song in 1967, and it was produced by Cox and Dodd at Studio One, but at that time had little success. In 1970, Penn left the music industry and moved to the Virgin Islands. She returned to the industry in 1987, and in 1994, re-recorded and re-released the song, which at that time was met with much success, topping the charts in the US, Europe, and her native home of Jamaica. Many artists have sampled the song, such as Ghostface Killer, Cano, and Jay Mills. Rihanna's version has met much criticism from YouTube fans, with comments such as, Not so good, doesn't sound right and commercial artists like Rihanna shouldn't be allowed anywhere near a classic like this. Despite the criticism, the song has had 500,000 hits to date on YouTube, and it seems the criticism has helped make her even more popular. Coming off the smash club hit in that summer's anthem, Pwn to Replay, the next single off the album, If It's Lovin' That You Want, was released. Although the second single was less successful than Pwn to Replay, it still peaked at number 36 on the US Billboard Hot 100 and number 11 in the UK. A third single, Let Me, was released only in Japan and was a big hit, climbing to number 8 on the charts. With the resume building with these chart-topping hits, a star was being born. To help boost popularity of the album and her celebrity, Rihanna set out on a tour with American pop singer Gwen Stefani as the opening act. Even with the article by Rolling Stone magazine, the album still managed to break into the top 10 in both the US and Canadian charts, gaining gold certification from the RIAA for selling 500,000 units and subsequently gaining platinum certification for selling 2 million units around the globe. In 2006, Rihanna participated in several endorsement deals with many companies, including Nike, JCPenney, Clinique, and Secret Deodorant. When Rihanna received an endorsement deal from Clinique, she recorded a song written by Neo entitled Just Be Happy as part of the deal to promote their happy fragrance. 2005 saw Rihanna rocking the mic on tour with Gwen Stefani, making crowds sweat in Japan, posing for magazine covers in Los Angeles, shooting her first film, and basking in the success of her first album, Music of the Sun. And now she has readied herself to do it again with her second album called A Girl Like Me. In an interview, she said, I grew up so much the past year. I had no choice to pursue my dreams and with their support, I left my entire family in Barbados to move to the States. It was a little scary to have no friends or family and all of a sudden step into a recording studio. Continuing the hits, Rihanna's second album, A Girl Like Me, was released less than eight months after her first album. It was released by Def Jam Records on April 19, 2006 in Japan, on April 24, 2006 in the UK, and then on April 25, 2006 in the US. The album debuted at number 5 in the US and number 4 in the UK. The lead single, S.O.S., was used in her endorsement deal with Nike. The song became Rihanna's first number 1 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. It also debuted at number 1 on the Hot Digital Songs chart. S.O.S. peaked at number 1 in Australia and number 2 in the UK. The song's theme is based around the song's protagonist crying out for help as she becomes besotted with a lover mentioned in the song. Because she is unaccustomed to feeling this way, 
She believes that she is out of character and states, Cause you on my mind, it's got me losing it. The hot single SOS had the club heads begging the DJs to play it again. The song was written by producers J.R. Rotem and Evan Kid Bogart. Label May Christina Milian was originally supposed to record the song for her album So Amazing, but she turned it down, and Island Def Jam CEO L.A. Reid offered SOS to Rihanna. The popularity of the song prompted the release of three different videos. One was an agent provocateur promotion, another was a promotion for the sneaker giant Nike, and the third video was made for the single and was a hot item on all music video venues. She said of the video for the single, It took six days to shoot, but working with choreographer Jamie King was amazing. Rihanna says, 2005 taught me the dedication and responsibility it takes to make this dream a reality. Waking up at 5 a.m. to start rehearsals, the training, the schoolwork, interviews, video shoots, going all day. It always seemed glamorous, but it is real work. My love for music and singing will never change, but the rose-colored glasses are no longer so rosy. Continuing on, she says, Many times over the past year, I didn't have anyone my age with me. When recording this album, I wanted it to seem like I was having a personal conversation with girls my age. People think because we're young, we aren't complex, but that's not true. We deal with life and love and broken hearts in the same way a woman a few years older might. My goal on A Girl Like Me was to find songs that express the many things young women want to say, but might not know how to say. To help express her feelings on the album, the powers to be decided to enlist her label mate and singer-songwriter Neo to write a song that would bring out the energy and soul and that would have the audience waving burning lighters in the air. Neo, born Schaefer Chimer Smith, is a musical singer-songwriter genius who was written for some of the industry's elite performers. His resume includes Let Me Love You for Mario, which held the number one position on the Billboard charts for nine consecutive weeks. Mario Vasquez's gallery, Paula DeAnda's Walk Away, reaching number 10 on the Billboard Pop 100 charts, the singer's first time ever to accomplish that hurdle, and Beyonce's number one hit, Irreplaceable. Neo was accountable for more than 35 songs written, sending a considerable amount of artists straight to the top of the charts. Besides writing, Neo's extraordinary gifts and showmanship made him one of the music industry's most sought-after performers. He himself has accumulated nominations for some of the music's most prestigious awards. Nominations include the 2006 and 2007 American Music Awards Favorite R&B Soul Male Artist, the 2007 and 2008 Grammy Awards for Record of the Year as Producer, plus many more. He also received wins at the 2007 BET Awards for Best R&B Male, the 2007 MOBO Awards for Best Song and Best R&B, and not to forget his 2007 Soul Train Music Award for Best R&B Soul or Rap New Artist for the song Sexy Love, off his debut album, In My Own Words. The single written by Neo off the album A Girl Like Me was entitled Unfaithful and addresses the feelings of guilt that the protagonist of the song faces as she cheats on her boyfriend. Rihanna talks about how the single reflects and gives an eye-opening view on the importance of honesty. She says, On a lot of records, men talk about cheating as though it's all a game. For me, unfaithful is not just about stepping out on your man, but the pain that it causes both parties. The song became her third top 10 hit in the US and in the UK. The third single, We Ride, wasn't as successful as her previous releases, failing to chart on the US Billboard Hot 100. However, it became her fifth UK top 20 single, where it peaked at number 17, and peaked at number one on the US Hot Dance Club play chart. During the recording of A Girl Like Me, Rihanna flew down to Jamaica to record with Sean Paul on the duet Break It Off. 
Brianna explains, I have so much respect and love for Sean Paul. He took me to visit the Bob Marley Museum before going into the studio, which was an amazing experience. When we finally got to the studio, I felt as though Marley's spirit was in the room with us. The single climbed to number 45 on the Billboard Hot 100. Sean Paul is my boy to the end. We share so much in common, you know, we come from very similar cultures and, you know, we can be in a conversation and a lot of people wouldn't understand what either of us are saying, but we understand each other and that's the fun part. The famed dance hall sensation Sean Paul adds flavor to any collaboration. Born on January 8, 1973 in Misawa, Eritrea, he spent his early years in Upper St. Andrew Parish. Between the ages of 13 and 21, he played for the Ugandan National Water Polo Team. However, dance hall music was his first love. He became a DJ after writing his own songs, basing his style largely on works of Supercat and Don Ute. In 1999, Sean Paul started to attract audiences in the United States. He was commissioned to collaborate with fellow dancehall hitmaker Mr. Vegas on a production for rapper DMX, entitled Top Shotter. The song went on to be included in director Hype Williams' movie, Belly. This was the beginning of many collaborations that led to his hot single with Rihanna, Break It Off. The single was also released as a digital download on February 19, 2007 which made the song jump from number 52 to number 10, and then eventually peaked at number 9. Perhaps the most surprising track on the album is the rock meets island vibe of Kisses Don't Lie. Evan Rogers and Carl Sturkin used a mixture of Caribbean elements, electric guitar, and a mesmerizing bass line. Coming from Barbados, I really hadn't heard that much rock music, Rihanna confesses. Touring with Gwen changed my perspective, so when I was discussing this project with L.A. Reid, I made sure to say I want to experiment with rock. In total, Rihanna has had 11 different number ones in the Billboard charts, and has had major success on the Hot Dance Club play chart with four number ones. Rihanna is refusing to take her newfound fame too seriously, because she fears ending up like her idol, Whitney Houston. Rihanna is horrified by reports of Houston's descent into a life of alcoholism and drug abuse. And she is determined to learn from Houston's mistakes and to remain true to herself. Um, maintaining your status as a role, mo role model, it really depends on the individual. But being here, you know, I know realize it, there are so many temptations and so many different things. It's easy to get caught up and it's also easy to go the wrong way. But you just have to stay focused and keep really good people around you. That's very important. Stay grounded and don't lower your standards for anything or anyone. She says, I love Whitney Houston. She's a big idol of mine and so influential. Seeing how things can go wrong when you seem to have everything is educational. Whitney has made some of the greatest songs ever. I don't want what's happened to her to happen to me. And that's why I don't take fame too seriously. The best thing about being so successful at such a young age is that I have a lot more business sense. Things that you usually learn when you leave college and you're in your 20s. I've also learned common sense things like keeping good people around me who help me avoid making mistakes. But the best thing about starting so early in this business is that I have more time to grow. During 2006, Rihanna was among the top awardees at the Music of Black Origins Awards held in London. Rihanna, who performed her single Unfaithful live at the MOBO Awards, won the award for Best R&B Artist. She was nominated in that category against artists such as Jamie Foxx, Mary J. Blige, Neo, and Beyonce. She adds this along to her awards for Best International Artist 2006 at the Much Music Video Awards, as well as Choice R&B Artist and Choice Breakout Female Artist from the 2006 Teen Choice Awards, also during the same year. 
She dominated the Barbadian Music Awards, becoming an eight-time winner. High style and breathtaking performances were the order of the night, as the brightest and talented of the Barbadian music industry turned out in numbers. The event honored both veteran and newcomers of the music industry. Rihanna took home the majority of the awards hosted at the Sherborne Center. The singing sensation won in the categories of Best Reggae Dance Hall Album, Best Dance Single, Song of the Year, Album of the Year, Best New Artist, Female Artist of the Year, Best Selling Female Artist, and Entertainer of the Year. A Girl in Demand, Bajan's singing sensation is quickly becoming the darling of the top media networks in the United States. After being on NBC's Today Show in New York, the 18-year-old Wonder Girl, whose sophomore album, A Girl Like Me, went platinum status only a few months after its initial release date of April 25, 2006, has been on two exclusive television shows and a motion picture cameo. Rihanna made her acting debut in a cameo role in Bring It All or Nothing. She performed on stage during MTV's Total Request Live and also gave a sultry rendition of her neo-penned ballad, Unfaithful, on ABC Network's The View, before an interview panel that included Barbara Walters. She also appeared in the soap opera All My Children. The magic carpet ride was in full gear. Rihanna was invited to New York City's Fashion Week to perform in the third annual Fashion Rocks concert at Radio City Music Hall with the legendary Elton John singing his classic, The Bitch Is Back. Now it's December 4th, 2006, the Billboard Music Awards. This seems to be the moment that may help cement the ongoing legacy for the young singer. The Billboard Music Awards are determined by the fans and not a committee as other awards are. The fans are the only and really true determining factors of separating the men from the boys, or in some respects, the bad from the good, the good from the great, and the great from the best. The event showcases the who's who of the industry. Mary J. Blige, Chris Brown, Carrie Underwood, T.I., and many more. That night, Rihanna would not be denied for what she came for. Stardom for the whole world to see. Up-and-coming star Chris Brown was awarded Artist of the Year Award, giving Rihanna a blow that would be countered. With her awards for Pop 100 Artist of the Year, Female Hot 100 Artist of the Year, and finally, the 2006 Female Artist of the Year Award. For the night was on her side, breezing by, landing three of the most prestigious awards of the moment in her arms. Though Mary J. Blige walked away with a jaw-dropping nine awards, Rihanna put herself and the island of Barbados even more on the map as she promised. Besides being a singer-songwriter, Rihanna decided to try her hands at the art of journalism at the MTV Movie Awards in 2006. As part of the yearly ritual, MTV invited her to guest report at the Movie Awards, following in the footsteps of many respected celebrities. Holding down the red carpet was no walk in the park. At the start, in her own words, very nervous and in need of a little coaching. By the end, she was like a pro even doing a victory dance to celebrate after having a successful interview with heartthrob Justin Timberlake. With all that was happening, from endorsement deals to all the awards, by the end of 2006, it was as if she were in contention for the Nobel Peace Prize. Singing among fellow artists such as Lionel Richie, John Legend and others, as they headlined the Nobel Peace Prize concert in Oslo, Norway, which only came into existence in 1994. This was an honor for her, and a boost to her career that many might have her as one of the all-time greats. Despite the newly found fame and fortune and a long list of fan support, there are many that claim the aspiring artist is not what she seems. A variety of hate sites, such as Bastardly.com, have cropped up, bashing the singer for not writing her own material and for being a man-stealer. And the most controversial claim of all, not really being able to sing. The rumors also have the Barbados-born sensation being romantically linked to Jay-Z, her boss and Beyonce's boyfriend. She has denied a hookup with a 38-year-old rapper. Of Beyonce, Rihanna says, She's Beyonce, and I'm his new prodigy. When we see each other, we say hi. We're not enemies, but we're not friends' friends. 
The web was soon awash with spite about how she got a record deal thanks only to the casting couch and how Jay-Z's jealous girlfriend Beyonce supposedly pushed her down the stairs in a rage. Rihanna, instead of ignoring the rumors, logged on and read them all. I wouldn't know what was being said, she says, explaining this decision. Then I'd get asked about them and I'm like, what? I have to know what's being said about me, so I know what to expect. So me and my friends would go on internet gossip sites and look this stuff up. But it's kind of sick how people read it and think this is their way to knowledge, that they know all about you. Barbados, far from being a refugee from the tittle-tattle, was as bad as anywhere. It's a silly way of Barbadians, Rihanna sighs. They always have to find fault. They're waiting for you to fall. As much as they enjoy your success and are like, keep it up, they have so much pride. It's easier for them to say, little whore, you slept with Jay-Z to get signed. Even when I go back there now, I'll see girls in the street walking and snubbing and saying stuff about me. On June 4th, 2007, her third album was released, entitled Good Girl Gone Bad. The album was given great reviews, and the lead single on the album, Umbrella, showed why Rihanna is true to her fans. The album consists of a more up-tempo and mid-tempo melodies compared to her previous releases. In the statement, she says, I think that's where I want to go on this one. You feel different every album, and at this stage, I feel like I want to do a lot of up-tempo songs. I want to keep people dancing but still be soulful at the same time. Rihanna felt that over the past couple of years, she has come of age, and this style is more complementing to her character as a young and energetic woman. She is so tuned in with her youthfulness that even growing up so fast in the past few years for the 18-year-old, she still possesses the child within herself. I really like playing pranks on people. I do that a lot. Every day is a new one. Actually, every hour. It's almost second nature to me. I play pranks on people, trick them, tell lies, and push them in the waterfall. It's a way of adding fun to my job and my life, she adds. In many interviews since the release of the album, the singer has had to defend and explain the title of the album because of the confusion that the audiences were having trying to understand what type of direction or image that she wanted to portray. Entertainment mediums began comparing her to the likes of Christina Aguilera and also Britney Spears. Um, Good Girl Gone Bad, it was a fun, it's a fun album to make, it's a fun album to listen to, and, you know, it was kind of tough for me because I was forced to maintain a certain image for so long, and now I just wanted to get out of that, I just got rebellious and did my own thing, and I wanted to have a little more fun with my music, a little more fun with my image, be a little bit more experimental, and that's why I just had to get rebellious, do whatever I wanted to do, I didn't ask or, you know, I didn't ask anybody, I just did it myself and that's why I call the album Good Girl Gone Bad, you know, I reinvented myself, my image and my sound. Many people were very confused and hesitant toward the transition, expecting similar results to that of Britney Spears when she decided to change her image. Over the years, Britney Spears' image has been tarnished by this bad girl image. She has become a circus situation for the media. From a short-lived marriage to former boyfriend Jason Allen Alexander on January 23, 2004, which lasted only for 55 hours, to marrying her backup dancer Kevin Federline, in which the marriage was very bizarre and short-lived, lasting less than two years. Also, since the crossover of images, the pop icon has been in numerous incidents involving law enforcement. Rihanna spoke of these concerns with Capital FM, a UK radio station, regarding the album title. Bad is not sleazy. Bad has its own term to every individual. And in my case, it just means I've gotten a little rebellious on the album, broken out of my shell, and I'm taking risks. Michael Jackson bad kind of way. Bad means cool. Bad means funky. Bad means having an attitude. Bad means being edgy. This album is definitely a great representation of who I am now and where I am in my career. Speaking of being rebellious and coming out of her shell, with all of the hype and anticipation of the album, she decided to protect her newly found image with the help of an umbrella to keep failure from raining down on her. Uncovering this odd scenario and finding out what type of magic umbrella she has acquired assistance from to keep the party going, we will take a look at the many uses and types of umbrellas that there are. The umbrella, a canopy device was designed to protect from precipitation or sunlight. The word umbrella is from the Latin word umbra, which in turn derives from the ancient Greek word ombros. Its meaning is shade or shadow. 
In Britain, umbrellas are sometimes called gamps, after the character Mrs. Gamp in the Charles Dickens novel Martin Chuzzlewit, who was known for often carrying an umbrella. There are many types for different uses, such as the beach umbrella, an umbrella for cocktail drinks, and umbrellas for the use of photography. Now, the most innovative and most popular umbrella today is the song and video Umbrella, featuring Jay-Z, off Rihanna's smash hit album, Good Girl Gone Bad. We in the world can't put a specific date or location on the invention of the original umbrella, but we definitely know where, who, and what year Rihanna's umbrella was created. Umbrella was created by Terrius the Dream Nash, Christopher Sturt, and Jay-Z. The original release in origin was March 29, 2007 in the U.S., and later took up residence in the U.K. on May 14, 2007, and in the E.U. on May 25, 2007. Speaking of the meaning she gives of the word bad, that is what her first single off the album was labeled. With the song Umbrella, Rihanna's career was taken to new heights. Umbrella was number one for seven weeks in the U.S., and was the most played single on the radio in the summer of 2007. On June 9, 2007, Umbrella jumped 40 spots on the Billboard charts to claim the top spot which made the summer hot. Some of my favorite tracks on the album, um, well, my favorite tracks are, you know, obviously Umbrella, I love that song. It's one of the most original songs I've ever recorded, and for some reason, that's the one that I don't get tired of performing, you know, you get tired of performing your hits for so long, over and over again, but Umbrella, every time I, I perform it, it's like performing it for the first time. On top of the criticism on YouTube for her earlier single, You Don't Love Me, No, 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 from the Girl Like Me album, Umbrella was instantly accepted by everyone, including the Rihanna haters. One comment was made on the site Bastardly.com as saying, I've criticized her in the past but this song could be the greatest ever. The words are great and the message is a good one, and the video is hot. Another states, she can sing and dance. She is the queen of queens. The single topped the UK charts in May 2007 and stayed there unscathed for 10 weeks. This stay of musical dominance made it the longest chart topper of the 21st century and the longest since Love Is All Around by Wet 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 in 1994. While shooting the video for Umbrella, Rihanna reduced a crew member on the set to tears. Because Rihanna, as the crew member stated, was the most incredible thing I had ever seen. The 19-year-old Umbrella entrepreneur was decorated in silver paint for part of the video. And director Chris Applebaum admits the sight made those on set extremely emotional. He says, I had one eye in the camera and the other one was closed, and I heard this odd sound. And so I opened the other eye and looked down and the camera assistant was crying. So after the take, I asked her if she was okay. And she looked at me and said, Chris, this is just so beautiful. I just can't believe I'm actually watching this. This is the most incredible thing I've ever seen. And it really felt to me like we were shooting something unique at that moment. On top of the success of the single and artistic demeanor of the video, one thing was denoted very much by the fans, her brand new body and her drastic weight loss. Rumors began floating of perhaps an eating disorder of the young beauty. Interviewed by People.com, it wasn't so much losing weight as being fit and toned and healthy. I just didn't feel great, she said. Now I'm working out and trying to eat healthy. That's making me lose weight without even thinking about it. I'm not intentionally trying to get skinny. Her fitness program includes lots of cardio and weight training two or three times a week. I work with a trainer, she said. We work on the arms. I don't want manly muscular arms. We work on my butt because I love my butt, but my legs are my main focus. I'm obsessed. Unique is what this video was for 2007. So much so that MTV decided that the video be given its highest of honors for the night of the MTV Video Music Awards, the Moon Man Award. The fourth single from the album, Hate That I Love You, features singer-songwriter Neo. The song, compared to its predecessor, Umbrella, is not up-tempo, but rather it's a classy R&B song 
with a strong melody, good vocal performances from the pair, and lyrics which tell a familiar tale in a refreshingly uncliched manner. In respect, it reached number seven on the U.S. Billboard Hot 100, number seven on the Billboard Pop 100, and as high as number four on the Billboard Top 40 mainstream chart. The huge success of Umbrella and Good Girl Gone Bad, the album from which it came, has given her the kind of clout or bright cloud she's never had before. Speaking of bright clouds of a natural occurrence, late in 2007 while in California, Rihanna was scheduled to perform live at the Boo Bomb concert, sponsored by the radio station Wild 94.9. In the midst of the event, the young singer experienced her very first live earthquake. The event had the young artist up in arms and a little shook up, but she came out of the incident unharmed. During an interview at the station a short time after the incident, she was asked to comment on the ordeal. I was standing right in the hallway and I, oh my God. <laughs> Welcome my to California, girl. Earthquake, so, oh my goodness. I was freaking out. I just saw the floor moving. My security was like, outside. Adding to the ordeal, in reality, that was the second earthquake Rihanna could have been considered in. Participating with MTV as part of a show called Once Upon a Prom, in May of the same year, she herself shook up someone else's world when she shocked a lonely high school student by showing up at his prom as his prom date. One of the most memorable encounters, she says. Being a teenager herself and not being able to really enjoy herself among her peers these days, she said in an interview that it was the most fun she had had in a while. Still, in some kind of search for ultimate supremacy, the fame hasn't, by the looks of it, yet provided her with meaningful, as opposed to superficial, affirmation of her real worth. Behind her, she has guiding hands on her shoulders. In front, exploding flashbulbs and inquisitive fans. Neither seems especially comforting. Rihanna admits fame brings loneliness sometimes. The songstress mulls over the dark side of being famous and her feelings about it. She told Sunday Time, Fame is lonely. At first I was on an adrenaline high, but after a while it gets repetitive. And that is when you think, oh wow, I'm sitting in a hotel room once again, just me and the television. She followed up with, When you're in the spotlight, people are like, what do you have to worry about? They forget that success is one great aspect of your life. But behind that, there are problems. There are dark sides. There is loneliness and unhappiness. Rihanna also revealed that she had to learn to read people to trust them. In this business, people are shallow, she says. They are dishonest. You can't trust them. I've always had a thing for reading people. I sit. I watch you, I observe you. It really helps me to understand how to play the game. It's a game that sucks. I did a show in Belgrade, she says. We were expecting 6,000 people, and 24,000 showed up, and I couldn't understand why. I look at them and still think, why are you screaming for me? I still think of myself as a normal girl. Rihanna got what she wanted, and it was more than she bargained for. She traded a chaotic environment for a controlled one, in which haircuts are policed and achievements called into question. Enviable? Think about it. Talk about a marketing campaign that writes itself. R&B sensation Rihanna's mega popular song Umbrella has been on the Billboard Hot 100 charts for more than 15 weeks. And now the singer has developed her own line of, you guessed it, umbrellas. The 19-year-old Barbadian has partnered with Totes, a British company considered the daddy of rainwear and accessories. She has lent her name to five new Totes products. They range in price from $14.99 for a slender umbrella bearing her name to $50 for a large, heavy-duty version. Endorsing the umbrella brand also will turn a new page for the singer. She isn't known for encouraging her fans to cover up. In the umbrella video, Rihanna gained infamy by appearing wearing nothing more than silver paint. Many more endorsees began knocking the door down to exploit the young beauty's new sexy image. Next up to bat, Gillette. A Gillette spokesman speaks of Rihanna. Riri's got Tina Turner legs. Rihanna was named 2007 Venus Breeze Celebrity Legs of a Goddess. 
to make sure that Rihanna's legs were well guarded and protected, Gillette took out a $1 million insurance policy on the two golden beauties. Um, Venus Breeze, we just signed on with them. They just named me this year's Celebrity Legs of a Goddess, oh. which I'm still, you know, So they're well shaven. <laughs> yes, they are. And not nicked. You can never nick them. Never? No. Okay. Never, but if so, there's that insurance policy waiting. Exactly. Wow, that is amazing. After the release of the Umbrella video, Rihanna's dating scene became very much apparent to everyone. She began being linked to a number of high-profile stars, including singer-actor Omarion Granberry, actor Josh Hartnett, and Transformers Indiana Jones star Shia LaBeouf. Denying all rumors, she explains, No, I'm single. I like being single, because you can explore new things. At times, not having commitment is great. Recently, Rihanna has revealed that her mentor Jay-Z is so overprotective of her, he vets men before allowing them to approach her. I just found out from a mutual friend that guys will talk to Jay first before they try to approach me. He's very protective. Jay has my best interests in mind. If it's a good guy, I know Jay won't shut him down. But if he's not, Jay will be like, no, no, no. I have no clue who they are and I guess I'll never know. To further cement her objective of being single and independent, she wants to follow in the footsteps of legendary singer Madonna. Rihanna is so impressed by Madonna's music ability that she recently stated she wants to be the black Madonna. The 19-year-old singer whose Good Girl Gone Bad tour kicked off in September 2007 in Canada said, I want to be the black Madonna. Rihanna added, any artist could have done the music which appeared on her first two albums but her latest songs were ones only a certain artist could do. With the remarks of being the next Madonna, the crossover element of her career became even more evident. And now the crossover became very evident when Rihanna appeared on the red carpet for the opening of the California Speedway's Running Wide Open event. She was seen taking a spin with NASCAR star Jeff Gordon in a sleek, flamed-out Corvette to hype the event. Getting into the homes of every racing fan and family of racing fans of all ages and cultures is sure to carry much weight to help secure the legacy that Rihanna is sure to leave. Taking a share of this country music audience will add millions of listeners and fans to help Rihanna become more of a household name. Something that Rihanna has done that other artists seem to have not been able to do is just reach a broader audience, especially with the younger generation. It's fit for all different um, types of people. Basically, you can cross over. Everyone is attracted to her music, and she gives you a lot of spice. She's been able to cross over and, and, and basically pull in crowds that other people haven't done at this early stage in the game. It's not just kids, it's not just adults who listen to her music, it's everybody. So I think she kind of bridges that. She kind of does that independently, so I like that. 2007 marked many accomplishments. She received Grammy nominations for Best Rap Sung Collaboration, Song of the Year, and Record of the Year for her song Umbrella, featuring Jay-Z, Best Dance Recording for Please Don't Stop the Music, and Best R&B Vocal Performance by a Duo or a Group, and Best R&B Song for Hate That I Love You. This year in a new spirit of austerity and cutbacks, Rush Alhead Oleg Deripaska treated his colleagues and friends to a 2008 New Year concert whose star Rihanna only charged $500,000. George Michael, who sang for Vladimir Putin in last year for a reported $3.3 million, wouldn't even get out of a Ritz-Carlton feather bed for that. Still, she'll learn. As Komsomolskaya Pravada put it, she is a young singer, so she charges practically nothing. To begin the new year off right, Rihanna and Timbaland were some of the musicians who have joined forces with H&M to fight against AIDS, launching a line of t-shirts, hoodies, and tops for teens 15 to 24. The collection, titled Fashion Against AIDS, opened in February 2008 and is expected to raise awareness for the disease among teens with slogans like Believe and Stop and Think. Supporting youth AIDS through the Fashion Against AIDS campaign was a great way to encourage my fans to join me in the fight against HIV AIDS, she says. I love that H&M is providing a fashionable and easy way for young people all over the world to get involved in this worthy cause. Other celebrity supporters include Chicks on Speed, Good Charlotte, 
Henrik Biskov, Jay Jagger, Catherine Hamnet, My Chemical Romance, Rufus Wainwright, Scissor Sisters, The Cardigans, Tiga, and Ziggy Marley. Other charities that Rihanna contributes to include DKMS, an organization that connects bone marrow and stem cell donors with patients in need, and Live Earth, organized by SOS, Save Ourselves. Live Earth is a series of concerts that took place around the world on July 7, 2007, to engage people on a mass scale to combat our climate crisis, and Mission Australia, aiming to empower disadvantaged and isolated individuals, families, and communities by giving them the support they need to get back on track and lead more fulfilling lives. And last but not least, Believe, a public charity organization created by Rihanna, dedicated to assisting terminally ill children worldwide. Its mission is to assist and inspire children who suffer from life-threatening diseases, including cancer, leukemia, and AIDS. Believe raises funds and awareness for medical research, as well as for individual and institutional medical needs. The vision of Believe is to achieve what Rihanna has always strived for in her remarkable music career, to inspire with hope, courage, and love. You know, she has a kind heart. She helps pull out when she can. I've, I've seen her out before. She helps the homeless out a lot. She has a good heart. Late in 2007, Rihanna sustained numerous injuries and illnesses, the postponed or canceled tour dates. Rihanna called off UK dates due to a not revealed illness. Doctors ordered the Barbados-born star not to perform, so her and her team canceled her gigs in Birmingham, Nottingham, and Bournemouth. Finally, in 2008, after many rumors and speculations of Rihanna and Josh Hartnett dating, the rumors were confirmed true. The two were very happy together, and life seems to be a roller coaster for them. Recently, of just confirming the relationship, the singer was rumored to have an interest in posing nude for a specific men's magazine. But the rumor was immediately squashed when interviewed by FHM Magazine. The stunning 19-year-old singer is famous for her raunchy music videos, but says she won't be tempted to post nude, regardless of the amount of money she was offered. She told FHM Magazine, I'm only 19. My mother would kill me if I posed nude. She also revealed she could never even wear a bikini in a video or photo shoot, because family members would be outraged. A source close to the singer added Rihanna's boyfriend Josh Harnett wouldn't be too happy about his Barbados-born girlfriend stripping off for a specific adult magazine, whose owner dons a smoking jacket at all times. The source said, Josh really wants to date someone sweet and innocent that he can take home to his parents. If Rihanna decided to pose nude, it would destroy the whole image she's building for herself as a singer and as a girlfriend. While Rihanna has vowed never to strip naked for a photo shoot, she is happy to be seen as a sexy star. She said, let's just say I want to do things my way. I can be stubborn. If someone wants to force me to do something, I'll end up doing the exact opposite. I have to be myself. If I want to be sexy, I mustn't restrict myself. I want to be young, fun, and sexy. Though she may have kept her promise to not pose nude, keeping her bad girl image totally innocent, her newly found image and character did finally catch up to her. When, in October of 2007, the young beauty attended the wedding of cousin Nigel Alstrom, showing up in a blue gown that was too revealing, upsetting conservative family members. Fellow guests also disapproved of the fact that Rihanna appeared to be wearing nothing underneath it. Side views of the singer gave prudish wedding guests a clear sight of the star's breasts. One appalled family member says, she should have been more low-key, dressed appropriately. She had words with her aunt and mother, and she was asked to leave. The years have brought the singer many ups and downs, plus lots of money and fame. The awards she has received are yet the icing on the cake. We do not underestimate the success that she will continue to receive, but we can underestimate the tribulations that could become. In five to ten years, I think Rihanna will take her, her music to another level. Rihanna will be stepped up in life in five to ten years from now. I think she'd be probably one of the top three, you know, of all time. It'd probably be just as bad as Janet. Rihanna is still going to be at the top of the charts. She probably is going to change her style up and just have a whole new look. I think she'll be doing a lot more on the silver screen. I think she'll probably go into movies. 
maybe TV also. The rest of the year I'll be touring. I'll also be touring in the beginning of 2008, but I also want to get into starting my fashion line and that's the next big step for me. Very exciting step, but I can't wait. She waves to the audience as gracious as any beauty pageant winner can contribute. It's Rihanna, from Caribbean beauty queen to American dream.